Hi there. Uh, I've got a, a general property video for you today. Um, got nine tips that I want to go through. Uh, looking through um, the videos and all our stats on YouTube, the back end, we had just over 20,000 people view uh, our channel um, last month. Thank you very much. Um, if you enjoy it, subscribe, give us the, the thumbs up and all those things. Um, but yeah, just generally looking through the comments, um, a lot of people are using the time that they've got now to try and figure out how to build and how to get started, how to, how to build a buy-to-let property portfolio. So um, I wrote down a, a list of things I think will, will help, pointers, get you in the right direction. There's nine altogether. So let's just dive in. Um, before I do, let's just give one little caveat. Personally, I be, believe that building a, a buy-to-let property portfolio is, is the best wealth creation strategy on planet Earth. Um, my personal belief, you can't, can't argue with that. Um, uh, however, if you get it wrong, it can become an absolute nightmare. Let's not uh, sort of uh, sugarcoat it. Um, so getting it right is really key. You know, you, all the things that can be a nightmare, are it's possible to manage them out so that they could just be a minor annoyance, but you do need to get that sort of um, background knowledge, the support, the help. And uh, well, hopefully that's what the, these tips are about. So first things first, uh, identify your goals. Um, what are your financial aims? Um, su success requires forethought. Uh, it's essential to know the goals that you've got. I've, I've actually, I'm just in the middle of doing it now. Um, you see, I've got it on the screen here, and this is my, my board papers. So you know, I've, I've run more than one business, and you know, all the papers are in here for everything. Um, and you'll see, this is not sort of planted for the video. I made sure it was at the top so I could find it, but genuinely I carry these around with me. Um, it's the, uh, that, that is, an, a, I, I call it an orbit planning tool. This is for, um, for the landlords, the business. And then at the back is always, actually I didn't plant this one, so I didn't get it ready. There you go, there you go, see. Um, at, at the back is the one for my um, lettings business, for, for my, my own portfolio. And I've got um, last year's there, and I've got a blank one there because we're just going over the financial year and um, and, and, and changing a few things, and we're, we're creating the new one as well. So um, the all the financial planning tool, more than just financial planning tool. So for example, I, I do mix business with pleasure on that actually. So there's, there's the stuff that is a business, and then you know what's the business going to do for me? That's the way it's put. So half of it at least. Um, that planning tool, I'm not going to go through it with you now, but I think it's essential you go through something like that. If you go to the description on the video, you can download a copy of it. And uh, if you download a copy, there's also some instructions how to do it. Essentially, each one of those spokes on the wheel is something that's important. So that's, that's kind of down to you. The instructions will sort of run through the, the process, what's, you know, what's going through your mind to say whether something's important or not. Give it a spoke. Uh, and then the rings as they go out, our, our, our time on, ongoing, you know, so one year, two year, three or four year, whatever. Um, could be could be two year plan, could be a five year plan, it could be a t could be a ten year. Actually, probably wouldn't be a ten year plan, um, but you know, having a ten year goal is not a bad thing, is it? So, um, yeah, download that. That's useful. I think that that, that would you know, I, I put that as number one because it's the starting point, isn't it? Where do you want to get to? Number two. I put don't do it alone. So number two of uh, nine tips. Don't do it alone. Experiences taught us. Yeah, it's tough. Finding, fixing and renting properties is tough. Um, it's better to be supported. Um, you're probably going to need yeah, a good mortgage broker, solicitor, accountant, um, definitely a good letting agency. Yeah, here, hi, We're, our link's in the, in the description as well. Um, but well laid out financial plans um, alongside a team of people to help you are going to give you the, the, the best number, the most chance of success. Um, number three, start small. Um, what, what do I mean by that? Uh, don't dive in, you know, um, I see lots of landlords diving in, you know, they've got, they've got a pot of money and they're able to buy two, three, four, five houses. Uh, we meet, regularly meet landlords with one to five properties and there's something about them wrong, you know, and, and even you can even see their sort of learning journey. Maybe the fifth one's actually quite good, but it takes some unpicking. Um, so get to speak to all of those people. Um, we hold a, a discovery day. Every uh, every week, 
it's on it's on Zoom. Uh, people come along and they ask the questions. And the amount of times we just ask a, uh, the question gets asked and we get answered. And you can see it's a completely different direction. Um, hopefully we're sending people off in the right direction. But if they'd have been going on the other path, they'd have, they'd have got a property which you know buy two or three of those, it will stop you buying the fourth for whatever reason. You're not enough cash flow, you become a portfolio landlord, it doesn't stack right, um, you're not in a limited company, but you should be, or vice versa. All sorts of questions. So get, get your questions answered and uh, start small and make sure that the building blocks are um, are right. Build, you know, build eat the foundation. The, the first, fourth, fourth, one, two, three, four, five properties are the foundations, aren't they? So make sure they're right. Number three, I can't overestimate uh, or, or, or stress, overstress the importance of this one. Um, create a positive cash flow. Net, net, your property should make you money every single month. Talking about the building blocks, you know, if every single property you make um, you know, either loses money, that'd be terrible, or just about makes money, that's not a solid foundation. You know, making 50 to 100 pounds a month on a, on a property is not good enough. You know, you need to be able to build a property portfolio that can take a knock, you know, voids, bad debts, maintenance, unexpected maintenance. It can all happen and you try and manage it out so it doesn't happen, but it can happen. Take a, you know, make it so it can take a knock. You know, you've got a void, you've got a bad debt. It's okay, I've got some cash in the bank. The other properties are making a, 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 a cash flow profit, a profit every month as well. So create a positive cash flow, net, net. Um, next one, number four, think about your yield. Um, focus on not just the value of the property, what it's doing for you one of the key spokes on my orbit there is you know what 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 is it doing what what, what is the um the value of the property versus what it does for me um think about you know see you know i've got this crown jewel property not me i'm talking to, about another landlord might be talking about you yeah i've got this crown jewel of a property it's beautiful it's worth a lot of money it's there and when you look at what it makes for you it's just not is, is it worth it ask yourself the question is it worth that is it paying its way could I sell that valuable property? It might be nice, it might be pretty, it might be somewhere you lived before. You might have an emotional attachment to it. You know, that equity that's in there, squish it into three or four different houses, maybe four or five different houses sometimes, and then rent each one of those out and think about the yield, the gain there that you're making. So make sure that each property that you have is paying its way. It feeds into the last point, they've got to be making profit every month. So. Um, have you got something a crown jewel maybe you own you got more equity in it um think about whether that's paying its way number five don't forget your tenants um good landlord needs a good tenant good tenant needs a good landlord um and make sure that you know you're thinking who are my ideal tenants am i buying for the right tenant type my ideal tenant is a, is, is a family you know um they they're stable they they uh, generally speaking um are looking after their kids looking after their house uh, want to stay in a, an area for a long time they prioritize paying their rent because they want a roof over their kids head those kind of things you know my, my ideal tenant for, for me for our business model is is a family they're less transient they pay on time and they look after the property you know it might be different for you you might be living in a student town or the, you know, whatever um, but it's worth thinking about and making sure that you're gearing your portfolio towards your tenants um, Without good tenants, your business will not thrive. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, uh, number six, do, do your research. You know, have you ever heard, you know, knowledge is power? Absolutely. Um, when finding, fixing, and renting a property, get your ducks in a row beforehand. Um, you, know, you don't want to be you know, getting the keys, going in there, and then making it up as you go along. Do your research. Right house, right street, right renovation. Um, leads to the right tenant, the right financial outcome. You know, you've got to get all your ducks in a row. Uh, so, you know, check out the towns, the local streets, get to know a, 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 an area on a street by street level. That's where you need to be at. So do your research. Uh, number seven, renovate to accumulate. Personal favorite one, favorite one of mine, um, improving the property, increasing the value, expands your portfolio, expands your options. You know, a, 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 it could be a few simple renovations, liquor paint, new flooring, all the way through to new kitchens, new bathrooms, you know, replastering, rewires, slightly more. I would keep it, I, I would personally always say, um, renovations we, we like to think of as, as, as heavy decorating. Um, so, you know, I don't do things that need planning permission. You might, but you know, consider it the time implication of planning permission and, and, and doing big, bigger, bigger jobs, you know, full on developments. When I call something heavy decorating, what I'm really meaning is, um, you know, if, if you 
paint some walls in a house and decorating heavy decorating a roof off and a roof back on that's decorating as far as i'm because heavy decorating i know it's not but you know i can say to a builder you see that roof i want it replaced like for like exactly how it is it's quite easy to explain and understand you get a quote for it whereas if you say i'm building this extension out the back and that there's all sorts of extra things time delays planning got to design the thing replacing stuff like for like maybe a few tweaks in the kitchens and the bathrooms and layouts it, it it keeps things moving and it keeps things simple and it keeps things uh, manageable you know so renovate to accumulate um find good reliable tradespeople to deliver a quality job and reap the benefits you know somebody would a builder would be buying a house doing it up selling it on there's a profit you know build build to flip build to sell uh, do it build to rent and uh, instead of selling it use what would be that profit as you know something to buy the next house or maybe you can uh, refinance and pull that money back out of that house you know it's 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 doing that extra bit and um, it, it, it's the rocket fuel that will grow your property portfolio number eight remember the exit strategy going all the way back to your plans um you know are you achieving what you want to do um you know when are you finished what what, what is what's the goal um you can have extra lifts i'm on about a seventh or eighth lift on that point you know so we've achieved that goal what's next what's next what's next and you know the goals of i couldn't have even thought about the goals that we have now um 10 years ago it would, yeah, I, they wouldn't have even entered into my head so um keep the end result in mind always and keep it within the medium term you're there and then an extra an extra lift and keep revisiting it and talking with your talking to yourself talking with your family talking with your friends and um, your advisors and keep that, uh, that, that that planning process and final one and you said you, know, you would say this but you know, get the best letting agency you can um your agent should always have your best interests at heart and i think that's usually a given if you find a good one uh, but they need to be capable as well um, a good letting agency will make you more money than without one. Uh, you know, the, uh, the voids will be less, the rent will be higher, the arrears will be lower, so you'll, you'll collect more of that rent. Your maintenance bills will be less because you'll have access to the, you know, the trade prices versus going and calling Google or Yellow Pages or whatever. But it will be a competent job. But yeah, um, I, I, I see some people sort of take me up to, on that point sometimes. Oh, I can get it done cheaper than that. I say, yeah, I know, but look who you're using. Are they insured? Are they going to do a proper job? That's not to regulate. For example, you have good people at trade prices, and so it's a solid job uh, for less. You know? so, so absolutely, that they should make you more money. Um, but then also they'll insulate from you from all the hassle, all those phone calls that come through, and you know, get rid of your phone call, uh, get rid of your telephone number, and none of the tenants should have it. Uh, you know, the phone calls are answered 24/7, 365 days a year. You insulate that hassle, and then you get your time back. So that's what a good letting agency should do for you. For you. And only then is your business truly scalable you know, if your uh, business relies on you and you only you're probably only going to get to five ten properties without um and you probably won't do a great job of it either uh, you know put a, uh, a letting agency in there they're expert at this i am speaking from experience i've had a go at doing these things i i own the lettings business now that's on purpose i'm not a very good letting you know, lettings manager myself i need those people in the business that do a great job and put them in my business my property portfolio sings and um you know without them i would be floundering i'll be honest um only uh, by having them in there does your property business become scalable and don't forget i'll leave you this one last point you know, the average landlord in the uk does not own two houses they own one point something the average for the landlord's landlord owns eight and rising so stands to reason most letting agents manage properties for landlords with one or two properties um, so most letting agencies do not know how to manage a scaling property portfolio for the landlords.com does and uh, i think that's probably our uh, our usp our shining uh, sort of nugget of value there so anyway uh, go, go to the link there's two things in there uh, you got that orbit planning tool so if you subscribe the first thing that will come through i mean subscribe to our mailing list not to youtube you're welcome to do that as well but but uh, the mailing list the first thing that will come through will be the orbit planning tool and there's also a link in there to book onto a discovery call because maybe a good point of uh, your first um port of call for for you listening to the video if you're thinking yeah i want to grow a property portfolio is to book onto a discovery call we do them once a week 
and you book on it's on zoom and yeah, we'll run through you know the basics and some of our advanced stuff but also the main the main thing you know, half an hour's worth of of chat from us but the main thing you know, another another half an hour an hour or so will be that we're there as long as you need is you asking all the questions that you need to get out so you know, hopefully these these nine things have provoked more questions you know, write them down come on to a discovery day and get your uh, your questions answered so hopefully that was useful bye for now